the uh, Microsoft press conference. We've got Dan Greenwald and Che Tao here from Turn 10 Studios, Microsoft Game Studios, talking about Forza 3. Dan, Che, welcome, guys. Uh, we're completely happy to have you guys here. Dan, uh, Forza 3, it's been a long time coming, right? But you guys have uh, been working on this for a while, right? Yeah, you know, we're ready to bring it. That's yeah. what it came down to. Forza Motorsport 2, really excited, thought it was a great game. But for Forza 3, we wanted to improve all aspects and redefine the whole genre. Right. Now, uh, we saw some very intriguing things in, in the short demo that we saw yesterday on the stage. Uh, but I think that the thing that will excite the racing fans the most is the fact that you got in-car views, uh, cockpit views this time around. Tell us about that. And Che, feel free to just fire it up and uh, start driving. Tell us about what went into creating all those cockpits. Well, you know, first off, attention to detail is a hallmark of Forza 2, and we're really perfectionists at Turn 10. So when we decided to do 400 cars and cockpit, that automatically meant a lot of work. Right. So we had to work with our owner community and the manufacturers to go take thousands of pictures of every car, and then also videotape how the, the instruments work and how do they, you know, like a manufacturer's uh, multi-function multi display, how does that work? I mean, to make long story short, right. it took a lot of work right. and their, their level, the level of detail is just incredible. Do you have like a dedicated team to cockpits? We do. We right. have a dedicated team actually to just capturing them. Then we have a dedicated team to building them. Uh, there are hundreds of people working on uh, the cars alone. All right, and the other thing we saw while the game is still loading up is a car rolling. We've never yeah. seen that before in a Forza game, right? That's true. You know, damage has been something that we've done for a long, long, long time. But rollover was something that was hard to get the manufacturers originally to approve. But, you know, we worked with these guys really closely, and the goal was to say, look, we're good partners. Rolling over a car is something that really happens. Let us simulate it to the full degree. All right, so tell me, tell me where we are here. What are we looking at? You're looking at one of our new tracks. It's in Montserrat, Spain. It shows off the capability of our new graphics engine. So you're seeing long draw distances, high level of detail on the rocks. You've got bump mapping on the road edge. As he comes out of the light here, you're going to see a lot of HDR lighting as the uh, light kind of brightens up and then darkens back down again. Okay. And so this is a fictional track, though. It's a real location, but a fictional track, right? Correct. We actually went to Montserrat to capture the, the look and feel of the place. So we took thousands of photographs, did aerial photography. Uh, but when it came down to it, we wanted to design a track that would work well for all cars. Most real racetracks work well for high-speed cars. But if you're going to take like a Honda Civic or a Nissan Sentra or something like that on the track, you need more turns. You need more action. Right. And so. I know you guys have several of, several versions of this track playable. Can you give me an, a, an idea of the different kind of the, the flavor of the different layouts that you have? Yeah, the story behind this track, and that's something we actually do with all of our original tracks. We have the artists actually pitch the track with a story. Who bought it? Who owned it? When did they build it? Why did they build it? How is it used? Because then we can hold the team accountable to building that fiction into the track. So this course is our old course. The idea is that it was built as a mountain road originally, and then some rich guys back in the 60s took it over and actually turned it into kind of a racetrack they could race on. It's not safe by any means, right? You've got these guardrails and these long cliffs, so you'd never get the AFIA to approve a track like this. But even so, it's a really fun track, more like the Nürburgring, very twisty. We can feel the danger because the guardrails are right there. And, and something that you and I were talking about last night is that with these fictional tracks, it gives you a little bit uh, more leeway to create fun moments, right? You have these jumps, you have these elevation changes. Can you talk about the approach of creating these tracks? Yeah, even that starts with sort of the fiction that came behind the track. So the idea that this is a mountain road and it's had bits eroded so the pavement's really cracked and that creates little jumps, that was a big deal to this track in general. Uh, all right, we're getting a look at the, the cockpit view there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the cockpit view is very immersive. And again, we've captured all the instruments and how they move. First place. I would expect nothing less from you, sir. <laughs> So obviously people want to know about uh, handling cars, uh, physics obviously being very important to the Forza series. Um, a lot of people felt that the Forza 2 engine was, was an incredible driving engine. The, the cars felt great. When you, when you sat down to look at Forza 3, what was the first area you wanted to improve? First area I always look at is tires. Tires are the fun foundation of making a great simulation. And we were already pushing the boundaries of what we could do with tires. And for this version, we took it to a new level. 
We now feature tire deformation, which is when you're loading up a tire and you're carving your way through a corner, the sidewall actually deforms as the tire rolls over itself. We feature that in the game. That's a big deal. It's really hard to do, but to me, it's those intangibles you have to do to get a simulation right. So if I'm a, if I'm playing Forza and I, I played Forza 2 and, and I'm now in Forza 3, what does that feature do for me? How will the car feel different to me if it's been a while since I played the game? This is what's really cool. It's so dynamic. So based on the height of the sidewall and how sticky the tire is, what the compound of the tire is, what's the load of the car and where is it distributed, and even how you load up the rear suspension versus the front suspension, it's going to at, it's going to flex that tire and give you more slip angle in that tire. So a uh, really high sidewall car, tire that's you know kind of a poor rubber, as you load up that tire, the front's going to feel really sloggy. It's not going to really you know snap too. But if you've got a really low profile tire, it's going to stay very rigid. And so bang, 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 as you're steering left and right, it's just going to snap along with you. It's very cool. So like a Lotus Elise and a classic uh, like British sports car, they could be the same weight, and they would feel 100% different in how the steering responsiveness is. All right, shall we dive into another race? You want to show, show something else? Uh, while we're doing that, let me take a couple questions from the audience, if you don't mind. Sure, of course. All right, so um, Giovanni Benitez from uh, Corzal wants to know about the obvious question, what customization? Obviously, Forza 2, you had the paint job. Uh, could do whatever, but what, what will you do in uh, Forza 3? It's a great question. It's a hallmark of this series. We're not just pushing the racing genre, we're pushing the entire games industry and what you can do with UGC. On the car side, we've got 50% more upgrades. We've got more upgrades than any other game. So now it's not just engine swaps, it's drivetrain swaps, it's sway bars. You can do everything to the car. But on top of it, you know, obviously, paint jobs is a big deal to our game. And I'm not going to announce the improvements, but what I will say is how we distribute. And that's what UGC is all about. It's not about making you more creative or me more creative, because I can't do that. What it's about is taking the truly disruptively creative people and empowering them. And the rest of us, you and I, we turn into consumers. So we tune in every week to see what's Little Vixen putting on the, the auction house now. Well, now we're doing scoreboards, painter scoreboards, tuner scoreboards, director scoreboards, driver scoreboards, social coordinators. We're just trying to say, hey, these really creative people, and they're all in different disciplines, there's reasons for you to tune in every single week to see what are these people doing now. I mean, they're, they're always doing something shocking. And you sort of hinted at during the presentation that there's going to be some sort of video editor, right? Yeah. Can you tell us anything about that? I'll tell you a little bit about it, absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's a really cool feature. So we had like Project La Blackjack on Forza 2, and those guys were making this machinima, you know, little uh, drift videos, and they were really cool, telling little drift stories. Well, they had to do that with capture cards, and they needed Premiere and all of this. What we've done is said, hey, whenever you're in a replay, at any point, whether it's an online replay that you're, you've captured or what have you, you can export that replay to a WMB and then upload.